My spiritual journey started at seven years old when I met my spiritual teacher. And I started learning about the law of attraction and how visualizing was important. But I also created like a vision wall. And one of the vision that I put on my vision wall was traveling. And we were in a family that never went anywhere except home. And so now we have like, I've done more than 40 countries speaking worldwide. And I was like, wow, that really worked. All these things started happening because I changed the acupuncture of the home. Because feng shui is like acupuncture, but of your home. Not just of your body, but from everything around you. Okay, we're feeling good? Yeah. Wonderful. So thank you so much for showing up so early in the morning. And um, I'm going to teach today how to attract money and prosperity into your life. Who could use that? Ooh, I'm not so sure about it. Let's go to something else then. Who is ready for this? Yeah. Ah, okay, cool. So um, thank you for introducing me so nicely. So yes, I would love to share a shortly a little bit about my story, and then we're right away going into action and knowing what you can do in your life. Yeah? You're good for that? Good. So, yeah, my spiritual journey started at seven years old when I met my spiritual teacher, and I started learning about the law of attraction and how visualizing was important and how I also wanted to create something, you know, in my life. And I was drawing things over and over again. But I also created like a vision wall. I didn't know about vision boards. I created a vision wall. And one of the vision that I put on my vision wall was traveling. I was just talking to my daughter, who is actually also here. Um, yes. Um, so I was like, put out all the countries I wanted to visit. And we were in a family that never went anywhere except home. And so now we have like, I've done more than 40 countries speaking worldwide. And I was like, wow, that really worked. But other things didn't work for me. And that was that I had um, not such a great family, a great mother, not such an easy father. But also, you know, I was, quite, um, you know, without friends. Um, I didn't have a lot of friends in my life and I was bullied quite severely in school because, I don't know why, because of my light, because of who I was, uh, because perhaps I was so interested in mathematics and in religion. I mean, they were like my two top uh, topics. So, but anyhow, I wanted to sh change that. Now, everything changed when I was 15 years old, and now I had um, a, an accident with a truck, and I got literally, you know, catapulted away, and I died for 30 minutes. And they revived me and tried me, really to resuscitate me, and ultimately that worked, but I had gone to the other side. And the other side, I received a message that I was here to enlighten more than 500 million people. Now, when I came back a few days later to consciousness, I had no idea what that meant, of course. Yeah? Enlightening. You know, I come from a Catholic family. They don't talk about enlightenment. <laughs> and so what happened is that I started understanding there was consciousness. Yeah? And that I had become consciousness, but I also became part of my body again. 
And then I reached out a few months later to my spiritual teacher and I asked him, what did I do wrong? And he said, you have bad feng shui. Now, I had no idea what that meant. And he explained that it was my environment. That the place where I was sleeping was really affecting my good luck. And indeed, you know, since I moved into that bedroom, I did not have the greatest good luck in my life. And so I changed to another room. I changed the paintings. I actually painted everything myself. I changed the color of my furniture. And literally in two weeks, everything shifted. Suddenly the bullies became friendly and let me go. And some of them became really good friends. I had my first boyfriend, right? That was nice. Um, and suddenly there was like this shift of energy that happened. And I was like, the only thing I really changed was changing bedrooms, changing direction, changing colors, changing the images that were around me. And that's the first experience I had of feng shui. Now, what is feng shui? Well, feng shui is literally an energy system. Uh, it's an energy system that affects you constantly. And it is because it's your home. It's where you live, where you sleep, and where you work. Now, after doing all these changes, things started going in a flow, and I became a lawyer and a criminologist, started working for governments. But at 31, I felt it was time to start changing you know, the world. I felt like as a lawyer, I didn't really accomplish that much. And so at 31, I started teaching people about enlightenment, about meditation, about feng shui. And that is how I started changing the world. But I had this image of really affecting 500 million people. So each time I would work on my three-dimensional vision board, and see what I could put in as symbols to express that. Yeah, and the first symbol I put out to express that I want to reach so many people was a globe. You know, just a globe, right? And I put it, and you will see later on where I place that. I put it in my success direction. And in my success direction, I was like, my success will go globally. How many of you have businesses or you are healers or coaches and you want to attract globally clients? How many of you? Okay, first purchase today on Amazon or any place you want to go, get yourself a globe. It doesn't have to be big, but a, a decent globe, yeah? So, and then you will place it in your success direction. So that was one of the first things I did. And interesting enough, as I was doing that, I started attracting, you know, friends from all over the world. And as I was starting to travel at 18, 19, and that was the first thing that happened a month after putting my globe out, I actually traveled to Canada. That was like, wow, on the other side of the continent. Yeah? And so all these things started happening because I changed the acupuncture of the home, because feng shui is like acupuncture, but of your home. Not just of your body, but from everything around you. So moving forward, I felt like, okay, if I want to reach 500 million people, I need to immigrate to America. So I, I left Belgium, where I was born, I went to America, and within a month, something shifted again. And that is because I put in my success direction other things. I put in my success direction, first of all, a fake Oscar. Because I was in America and I thought like, hey, I could be in a movie, right? <laughs> of course, it's very simplified. But I thought, yeah, why not, right? So I put an Oscar, put my name on it, Marie Diamond, and I thought like 2006, that was like four years after I moved there. And within a month, the first thing happened because of that symbol I put in my success direction, I attracted my first Oscar-winning client. Since then, I have more than 20 Oscar-winning clients. So that little thing, because I focused on it, and I just didn't focus on it, I spoke to it. Because your home is an interconnection. So I spoke to my home, and as I was speaking to my home, I was speaking to myself. Yeah? Because you do all these affirmations, and you do wonderful talks to yourself, but when you speak out into a space, and that's your home, the space will respond. So I would say every day to my little Oscar, hi Oscar, how are you? And I would rub his head. Just very simple, 
You can say, well, Marie, that's perhaps too simple. No, it's because I spoke into the space. Yeah? I had a conversation with something around me. And then within a few months, I attracted amazing speakers and leaders that uh, some of you know. You know, people like Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup for the Soul, John Gray, Women of our mean, Venus, Men of Mars. Um, I attracted people like Marian Williamson, who is running for president again. Yeah? So I also attracted the late Bob Proctor as client. And these things just came to me because I was not just focused in my mindset. I was aligned with my home and the space around me. And when you do that, you will see that things will start going easy and effortless. I attracted also people like Steven Spielberg and Paul Abdul, Big Sean, uh, Jodie Foster, Jason Bateman. These are some of my clients that have allowed me to talk about them. But many are still using my work without making it public. Because feng shui is like something that's called like woo-woo energy. You know, it's like you put something out and it works. That's so strange, <laughs> right? And that's one of the reasons I decided to see here, I just turned 60, to make it public mainstream. That is my goal, yeah? And as I was doing that, of course, things started unfolding because I have a strong intention, but also because my home is set up this way and now we are having um, a Feng Shui Your Life TV show coming on NBC and um, also on PBS next year. So it's all these amazing things because I want millions of people to understand what changed my life and what will change your life. So hold that intention with me. So I just want to go back a little bit to still my story. Um, and as I was focusing on 500 million people, I had to attract vessels to make that happen. So I attracted to be in a little movie called The Secret. How many of you have seen The Secret? Yeah. So there I talk about romance. Yeah. Today I'm going to talk about money. But what happened is that the secret didn't go anywhere. At a certain moment, everything was stuck for the producer, Rhonda Byrne. And only after we changed her home and we changed the offices of the publisher and the marketing and 50 people from the movie itself were my clients, things start shifting and we all put Oprah Winfrey in our success direction. And a month later, Oprah called. And from that, things just moved forward. That's one of the reasons that people call me in my field, the secret behind the secret. Yeah? So, of course, I wanted to reach more people, right? And because of that, of course, I attracted Mind Valley. Because I put in my success direction the logo of Mind Valley. And I connected also with Vision because we're part of the Transformational Leadership Council, that's a, a big mastermind, and I had a picture of him and me, and I put it in my success direction with a little quote, I am ready to be a speaker on Mind Valley platforms. And three months later, Vision called me, and he said to me, Marie, I have a message for you. I am ready for you. <laughs> And I said, Vision, let's go into FaceTime video and I want to show you what I put on my vision board. <laughs> I am ready. And he was ready for me, or you were ready for me. It's a mutual energy, right? So this is how literally everything started flowing. So these are some experiences that I want to share with you. And of course now I've worked worldwide and we have reached with a secret and all the platforms I've been on and thanks also to Mind Valley, we have reached more than 500 million people that have become aware of this work. And now we're going to the 5 billion. So, first step. What do you need to do for Feng Shui? The first step is a power position to attract more success and money. Now, I have to be honest today, I'm the one in the power position. Because I'm teaching you. You are not in a power position right now. But that's how it works. Yeah, so 
each time from now on, you will be the one that will choose for the power position. And the power position is actually always the person that is seeing the energy coming in. So right now, I see the door. I see people coming in. Yeah, I see all of you. So that's why I am in the power position. If I would literally turn my back to you, yeah, and I would be start speaking like this, I would not see anyone, and I would not see people coming in. Is that a nice view? I know I have a beautiful back, but... <laughs> To be honest, it's not better this way. So, so many of you have been working at a desk with your back to the door. How many of you have experienced that or have that? Yeah? Okay. So, this gentleman, can you come up on stage for a moment? I want to do some... Yeah, you, you came up. So, I want to show you how your body reacts when you are in a power position. What's your name? Uh, Mika. Mika, hi Mika. So you're, in, you're having a desk at home yeah. and you're sitting, tell me, with your back to the door, you're sitting against the wall? Uh, around the corner. So. Around the corner, okay. So I'm going to do some muscle testing. So muscle testing is I will see how his body and his brain relate when he sits there. So I want you to close your eyes for a moment. Hold your hand, yeah. Push up as hard as you can, push. Come on, show me your power, okay. So, Mika, is that your name? Push up as hard as you can. Yes, it's your name. Is your name Peter? No, his name is not Peter. So, he becomes weak. His body says, I don't relate to that name. Okay. So, Mika, think about where you're sitting right now. Yeah? You see yourself sitting there? Okay. Think about money. I mean, this is a strong guy. He has muscles. Come on. So, his brain is saying, when I'm sitting there, my brain cannot open up to money. Yeah? Because he's not seeing the incoming energy. So can you, in your imagination, put yourself somewhere where you can see the door in that space? Yeah? You see that? You're there? Okay. Push up. Think about money. You see how his body is reacting? Okay. So let go. Let go. What will you do? Will you change your desk now? Yeah. Okay, give them a round of applause, yeah? So it's that simple. You know, so many people want to really shift the energy and it's the positioning in the space itself that changes your energy to attract money. But to attract also respect and recognition. So that's a very simple thing you can do in your own space where you work. Always position yourself that you can see the main door of that room so that people come in. You say, but Marie, I'm working online. Nobody comes ever in my space. It doesn't matter. Yeah? You always want to see the energy coming in. So when you do that, you actually shift your vibration. And you're not only shifting your vibration, you're shifting your brain waves. And you go from what we call beta brain waves, where our energy is towards the back of our brain, to our reptilian brain. We go into looking into the past. So when we are with our back to the door, we are always focused on the past and we stay in fear. We don't have solutions. Yeah? We see only our worries and our problems. When we're turning yourself around and we see the door, our energy goes to our frontal cortex. We are easier going into alpha brain waves, and at the same time, we see the future. We see space in front of us. And when we see space, we see creativity and focus rising up in ourselves. It's such a simple thing, but not just when you work. But each time you meet someone, yeah? For example, you have a meetup, I don't know, in a bar or a cafe or a lobby or a conference room or even here. Always make sure you sit in such a position or you stand that you see the energy, yeah? When you do that, your chakras open up, your brain opens up, and you will start of attracting opportunities and possibilities that you haven't seen before. I'll just give you a very small detail about also vision. So, vision, uh, Lakiani, of course, um, first when he met me, I told him about this and he was like, yeah, that is 
that was a little bit beyond his mindset at that time. <laughs> yeah, and he agrees with me on that. So, but then he was like, you know, things are not going well in the company at a time, and he was losing a lot of money. And he tells this publicly so I can retell the story. And then he changed his desk, and literally within a month, he made more than what he lost in the seven months before. And from that moment on, he has practiced this work in every place that he's working or every place that he's meeting people, and now see how Mind Valley has been flourished. So perhaps I'm now the secret behind Mind Valley. <laughs> so just going back a little bit about the law of attraction. So, you know, why is your space so important? Because there are three parts of the law of attraction. Now, you have probably worked on the first two parts. The first part is your heavenly luck, that is connecting with your soul, your spirit. That's when you work with meditation. That is when you're working on your soul purpose, when you're focusing on clearing your higher energy and releasing the negative energies in yourself. So that is your heavenly luck. Now, everybody has heavenly luck. Don't say, oh Marie, I'm without heavenly luck. No, you all have it. Now, there are people that do not have so much heavenly luck, but they probably are now born in war zones, yeah? But you all are here already in Mindvalley. That means you have some of heavenly luck, because you attracted teachers, you attracted Mindvalley, you attracted amazing people already in your life. You agree with me on that? You have some heavenly luck? Say, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Okay. So it is responsible for about 33%, and we call that your destiny, your karma, your good luck of the heavens. The second part is your human luck, and that's where Mind Valley teachers have been really focused on. And that is how to change your mindset, how you as a human being uses your talents and your skills to really bring your work forward. Yeah? So it's your thoughts, your behavior, your actions, and so many beautiful teachers in Mind Valley focus on that second part. And that second part is something you need to work on. It's not something that is a given. Your heavenly luck, there's some talents that are given to you. Now, in your uh, human part, you have to work on it. It's a discipline, yeah? So every day, you need to work on manifesting your goals, taking actions, having a positive mindset. I mean, it's hard work, but it really pays off. Everybody agree you have all good human luck because you've been working on it? it says, yes, I have. Yes. Okay. The third part is the part you've been missing out on. And that is what we call the earth luck. So feng shui is really an energy system that focuses on your environment. And it is, first of all, practiced for thousands of years by the Ch Chinese people. And I would say it started, first of all, with the shamans of China, where they could see and feel the energy, and they start finding out how the wind was affecting them. Because feng shui is really wind and water that if you would, for example, have a door that opens up towards the north, you would probably have more health issues because it's cold wind. Yeah? If you would have a front door and windows towards the south and the west, you would have warm wind coming in. So you will feel better, you'll feel more happier. Yeah? The second part is water, is where water is located. If you are close to water, of course, you will be able to grow and have fertility in your crops because there's all this good energy there. So the further you're away from water, you get into the desert, you know, it's not such an easy life. Let's be honest, this is where we all feel when we come here to Estonia, you know, there's water, right? It's green, it's beautiful. So this is a good earth luck place. Good earth luck places will always thrive. Whatever happens, for thousands of years, yeah? And so we as people know and feel where there are good earth luck areas. And perhaps you go on a holiday where you feel, oh, and when I'm there, I feel so good. I feel lucky there, I feel inspired there. You all have these experiences. But what about your own home? Is your own home a good earth luck space? 
Is it a space where you're like coming in and you feel in harmony and balance, everything goes well, or you feel like each time you're there you feel stuck, you feel you have no energy left, nobody comes to visit you, it's like, it's almost like a desert. Or is it a space where everything thrives? So how many of you feel in your home everything thrives? I mean by that success, relationships, health, and wisdom, raise your hand. Yeah, Ooh, only a few, right? How many of you feel perhaps there's some desert energy or is it money or romance or inspiration or your health, raise your hand, see? We have more people that feel they have not such a good luck from the earth energy. So that's your environment. So your home, get me this, is 33% influencing your law of attraction. It's not 1%, it's 33.3%. That's one third. So it's possible you have been connecting in with the heavens through meditation. You have worked with amazing teachers to change your mindset. But the mindset of your home and the energy of your home is possible that it stops you from moving forward. And that's what I found out when I was 15 years old. And when I start practicing, and what now more than millions of people have started experiencing. So let's get started again. We're going back to our power position. So this is a poverty position. A poverty position is when you are with your back to the door, we already talked about, but also with your desk against the wall. How many of you have that position right now? Ooh, too many. Okay. So in that case, what happens? You are facing a wall. Now, if you'll be facing a wall, what will happen? You will create a, the energy of hitting a financial wall. Have you ever thought about um, the President of the United States? Think about the Oval Room. Have you ever seen him sitting with his oval, in the Oval Room with his desk against the wall? <laughs> Have you ever thought about the King of England, you know, with his desk against the wall? Or any CEO, main CEO, with their desk against the wall? No, because they can't even talk to people. There's nobody that they can invite, but if they would have a space like this, they can put a chair on the other side, their team can come to them. They can talk to them, their clients can come to you. So if you are with this position, you actually are hitting the wall and nobody can come to you. Yeah? So that's the first thing you need to do, is you need to change, turn your desk around and Make sure there's space in front of you. When there's space in front of you, you have space to manifest. You have space to manifest your goals. You have, you have space of focus. Yeah. Now, I know some of you will say, Marie, I am in a position right now, I cannot change this. Yeah. I'm in a cubicle, in an in a office, and I cannot change that. What do I do? Well, in that case, make sure you put a little mirror left or right from you, so you can see still what's going on behind you. Just simple. It's not as powerful because I remember I was sitting like this and even if that wall is a window, it doesn't work. Yeah, A window, you say like, I see the world. Yes, but people don't come through the windows. <laughs> yeah? So there are some that come through the windows, but that's not the kind of people you want. <laughs> right? So that was my first position in my first job ever as a lawyer. Now, what happened is that nobody talked to me. I didn't connect with the team. My manager was totally not acknowledging me. And I went and I changed my desk one morning to this. Now, six months later, I replaced the manager. Yeah? And suddenly, everybody was seeing me. If you want to be seen, if you want to be visible with your work, and you can think, well, I want to be visible on social media. Be first visible in your own space. Yeah? Because then other people will start seeing you also. Now, what we have experienced is that you are literally changing your mindset just from that one position. So it will be fun in the coming days here in Mind Valley. People will meet up like, no, I need to see the door. No, I need to see the door. <laughs> right? So, you know, you can always focus on both seeing the door. 
right? So I just don't sit with your back to the door anymore from this moment on. And you will stay in an alpha frequency. When you're in alpha frequency, again, that's where creativity works, where you will start opening up to the future. So who, how many of you that had this position will change it to this position after they come back from Mind Valley? Okay, give them a round of applause, because they will take action. So you see, it's not just um, in an office, it's also when you go out for dinner, yeah, when you are meeting perhaps your loved ones, make sure both of you see the door, yeah? Now, second step, let go of the past. So in order to create new future, to create more money flow, you need to let go of the past. And what is the first step for that is decluttering. Yeah. So we all have too much stuff, anyhow, right? We are, in the Western culture, we connect and with so much material, we keep having it and we're holding on to it. Now, it's not only creating space to see and to connect with people, you also need to let go and create more space in your closets, on your computer, on your phone, everywhere. Yeah? Less is more. When there's less clutter, there's more money flow. Now, you can start, for example, with your wallet. Yeah? So, your wallet is your space where you hold your cards, your money, perhaps some identity cards, all this. Now, I don't know, some of you perhaps want to take their wallet out right now, yeah? If you have your wallet. And the first thing you can start is decluttering, is making sure you don't keep all your receipts there, yeah? So there's so much apps right now, you can take a picture of your receipt, and immediately it's uh, in the cloud. But every week, at least, take out all your receipts. So, because if you add receipts there, you're actually seeing all the time how you spend your money. And when you spend your money, your vibration will say, oh, I have no money left. Yeah? So what you can put in there, of course, there are some cards you can put in there. You can put some money in there, some cash money. I am a global person, so I have money from different uh, countries that I have the most clients in. I have some um, banknotes in there. Yeah? Always try to get something in there that is gold looking. Yeah? So if, it doesn't have to be real gold, but something gold looking. Even if it's a, a little paper, put something in gold so your brain connects in with wealth. Also put something in there that makes you smile. Like I have in my um, wallet, like pictures of my children when they were small. Yeah? And like when it's like, oh, it's not such an easy day, I take that picture up and I start smiling because I adore it. Of course, I have a picture of them when they're older too. <laughs> yeah? But it's like little memories there that you put in your wallet, but make sure you have too much stuff there. So some of you that look at your wallet right now, and when your wallet is too thick from all the receipts, there's no money that can come in. Yeah? Clear it regularly. It's a very simple thing. How many of you can do that right now? Okay, good. So do that today. So that is part of the decluttering, but also, of course, your office, your workspace. So think about the one space there, this person is sitting there, and everything is piling up, yeah? Or even you have nothing piling up around you, but when you open your screensaver, it's all open, yeah? All the uh, browsers are open, or you have so much files, you know, uh, folders on your screen. It's like you have no space to start with. So before you start in the morning, always declutter first the desk that you're sitting on. Now, some of you are working at home, and perhaps you're sitting on your dining room table. Never start working at your dining room table when all the dishes are still there. Clean that up first. How can your brain be focused on business, on money, on prosperity, if you have chaos around you? Chaos around you creates chaos in your money, creates chaos in your mindset. So make sure everything is organized around you. Now you can say, how many times do I have to do this? Well, as much as you can. 
the moment you start feeling stuck, look around you. What is it that keeps you stuck? Yeah? What is piling up? I remember this um, wonderful teacher, Jack Canfield. I come to his office, and literally, I had to walk like this. It was like a minefield of books. He had books everywhere on the ground. People sent him so many books, he could not even put them in the library. And I said, it's very hard for people to get to you, yeah, because you have to walk over books. He said, yeah, but Marie, there's, there's just so many. And I said, you have to start decluttering. You can never have things on the ground that from the door to your office, you have to kind of walk over things. You're actually blocking your money flow because of that. Another thing you need to do on your desk is not just on the sides, you have to clean up the energy, but also in front of you. Yeah? So this space, this peripheral view has to be totally open. When you do that, then money will start flowing in. But also your closets. Um, you know, open your closets and is it like falling out or is it not organized? Organization is really key. Now, it's not about, you know, keeping what gives you joy. Yeah? It's all about keeping what you can use. And that's a very simple question. Can I use that or do I need to still use that in the next year? Yeah? Anything you don't need to use right now, then put it in storage or put it in the cloud or wherever you feel you can do it, but create space of you. How many of you feel like you need some decluttering when you come home from Mind Valley? Raise your hands. Will you take action? Yes, I will. Yes. Okay, great. So also in your bedroom. Now, a lot of people don't think bedrooms are connected with money, but actually they are. Because when you have a chaotic bedroom in the morning, you won't get the aha experiences. You won't get the insights, what to do next during the day. So I remember, and especially for people that are looking for romance, you know, clean up your stuff in your bedroom so a partner can come in. I remember this one woman, and I come to her bedroom, and she has a double bed. Great. She's already telling the universe, I'm ready for somebody. But on the second part of the bed were all her clothes yeah, and her shoes. So if somebody would come in, she, this person could not even sleep with her yeah, or on top of the pile of clothes. So I said, let's clean this up. She said, Ree, I'm single for 20 years. I don't think anybody will show up anymore. I said, what do you want? She said, I want a handsome young guy. She was like 50. And I said, <laughs> well, let's get this going, right? So clean this up. And of course, we're going to talk about activation, then how to activate it. So she did hang a beautiful picture above her headboard of like an, a little bit older woman with a younger man. And like three months later, she called me like, I got the, hung, the hot young guy. So because there was space for her to come in. But also what she experienced is that suddenly money starts flowing easier. Because when you wake up in the morning and you have all clutter and chaos around you, how can you start your day professionally? It's just not possible. What's on your nightstand? I had people and they had like bills on their nightstand and socks and many other things. But, you know, think about it. Each time you wake up, you see your bills. How will you feel about your life? Yeah? I've seen the weirdest things on nightstands. Just put there a book that inspires you. Yeah, perhaps your journal, something that when you wake up, it, you have like good energy. Yeah. So how many of you can work a little bit on space clearing your bedroom? Raise your hand. Whoa. Okay. I want to see some before and after pictures. <laughs> also decluttering your living room. Yeah, the living room is your living space. It's also your kitchen. Because when you declutter, you create abundance. When there's chaos, you attract poverty. You attract blockages. So there's the three places. It's your workspace, wherever that is. It is your bedroom, and it's the living space. So your workspace is like eight hours a day. The bedroom is eight hours a day, and your living space is eight hours a day. So these three areas, Keep that as clean as possible. Now, some of you are saying, well, Marie, I have a lot of stuff. Well, perhaps you have an extra room or you have a garage. Then put them there for the moment. Yeah? So create space to attract money. 
That's actually the whole point. Now, the third step is once we have put ourselves in the right position, we have decluttered, we need to start activating. And in order to activate, we need to really understand that everything around you is like a three-dimensional vision board. I know some of you have vision boards, and you look at it perhaps once in a while, and you have to understand that everything around you acts like a vision board. Because your subconscious mind sees everything that is around you. The colors, the furniture, the images, the statues, the chaos, everything is giving you a message nonstop, 24 hours a day and night. So perhaps some of you are thinking, well, you know, I've done all this wonderful work with amazing teachers and I still am hitting a ceiling. I remember going to the late Bob Proctor, yeah. Think Rich, Grow Rich, right? That's his amazing teachings. And he has worked with this information of Napoleon Hill for so many years. And one day he meets me and he said, Marie, I am stuck. The late Bob Proctor told me, I am stuck. I'm hitting a ceiling. And he said, I need you to come to my home. And I come to his space and I changed things around and I told him about that three-dimensional vision board and said, whatever around you here, is that what you desire? Is that what you want? He said, yeah, a few things I, I don't want anymore. That's, not, that's my past. I said, take that out. Look for the future, right? And at that time, he was quite well known in the USA, but worldwide, nobody knew about him. So of course, I got him a big globe. If you want to be well-known in the world, get a small one. But if you want to be really known in the world, get a bigger globe, of course. So I got a big globe and put it in his success direction. And as he was putting there and asked him to spin it, yeah, to regularly look at it like, oh, Estonia, I've never been there. That could be an idea. Singapore, oh, I love that. I would love to go there one day. Haven't been there yet. It's coming. So um, anything like... Connecting with humanity, connecting with your future clients, connecting with all the people you're going to meet and be inspired by. So I put that in there, and now Bob Proctor is known as, the late Bob Proctor, unfortunately, is known as one of the top speakers on the law of attraction worldwide. Yeah? And his legacy will continue for generations to come. Because he understood that. And he said, Marie, you know, we all think it's on our mindset, but I do believe probably 50% of what we do is in the location. Because we always say location is everything. When you get for um, installing a shop or going to place, in, oh, location is everything. But how the location looks inside is as important as the location of the place where you're going to work. So aligning your home with the universe, that is what feng shui does. So you're aligned in your mindset, you're aligned with your soul, you're aligned with your body amazingly, but then align around you. Yeah? Your first marketplace to really promote your products, your services, is your home. Your home is your New York Times Square. Yeah? It's where you need to tell the universe what you desire. So feng shui is the energy system to increase the energy of your home. Now, how do we start with that? How do we activate it? Well, the first thing I would like you to ask is to download the free Mary Diamond app. Because that will start helping you to go to the next level with this information. Yeah? So in the Mary Diamond app, you will find that you need to put in your name, um, your birth day and your birth gender. It's connected with the DNA of your body. So as you put that in there, you will actually receive an energy number. And the energy numbers are between one and nine. And that number will actually connect you with your energy archetype. We'll go over them in a few minutes. It also will indicate your direction for success, for relationships, for health, and for money. 
You see, you will get what is somebody call a wheel. It's like a feng shui wheel. Because most people don't know how to work with compasses anymore, but to find the right wind for you. Because wind is qi, is energy. That is what we need to find out, and that's what the special compass is doing. So let me find that out with somebody here. Would like to come to the front? Yes, you were the first, please come up. Yeah, yes, you. And so what we, yeah, give her a round of applause. She's so brave. Hi, what's your name? Evie. Edith? Evie. Evie. Hi, Evie. Here's the mic. Yeah, thank you. So I'll go to the app. And so once you have downloaded the app, you will also be able to find other energy numbers for other people. Yeah? So I need to know your date of birth. October. October. Third. Third, yes. And which year, if I may ask? 1986. 86, okay. 86. All right, correct. Mm -hmm. Confirm you are female. Yep. Born, yes. Yep. Calculate and share. So it calculates the energy number, and she's number one. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So what does that mean? She is the wealth creator. Yeah. She's here to create wealth, sometimes for others, sometimes for herself. Yeah, but what is important is she will see then she is, her success direction is southeast. Yeah, so in the room, southeast for her gives the energy that creates the most money for her. So the southeast in this room, so you will hold the compass, you stand in the center of the room and you see where southeast is. Southeast is in that corner over there. You see that? So I'm going to do some muscle testing with her. So hold this in one, okay? Okay, push up as hard as you can. Okay, you feel that? Okay, all right. So think about money right now in your life. Okay, all right. There could be some improvements, yeah? So I would love for you to look that direction. Okay, hold your arm, okay? And think about money, look that direction. Push as hard as you can. Push. Yeah, you see you're much stronger. You feel that? Yeah? Okay. So when she's focusing on southeast, that is where money is coming in. For her, money comes in from the southeast. For somebody else, it comes from, from the north or the east or the southwest, depending on your birthday. Yeah. Now, what she has placed in the southeast will affect her. So let me check out again there. You're focusing on that direction. And think about a garbage can, yeah? How do you feel about money then? Okay, she feels very weak, yeah? So when you, for example, have placed her the wrong thing that doesn't give you money, subconsciously, your message will say, my money goes into the garbage, okay? Now, look at that. What is your business? Answer with the phone. What do you do as business? Answer. Um, I'm certified wealth fit coach, and I haven't been able to... Make money. Okay, so certified coach, and she wants to make money. Are you a Mind Valley certified coach? Um, well, through WildFit. Okay, it's through WildFit. Yes, yes, of course. So, <laughs> what would she do then to put in her success direction the symbol of WildFit? Okay. Yeah? Perhaps a picture of Eric Admides. Yes. <laughs> yes, right? So, perhaps the glue because you want to have global clients, okay. okay. Can you imagine that, yes. that it's out there right now? See a beautiful picture of Eric, <laughs> see a wildfit symbol, even the Mind Valley symbol if you want, okay. and put a globe. Can you see that in your inner mind right now? Okay, push as hard as you can, push up. You feel how strong you are now? Yeah. Yeah? So her subconscious mind just accepted this as the truth, as her new reality. So when you go home, you take your compass, okay. yeah? Sit yourself in a power position, okay? Okay, because you're not right now. My office is in my bedroom, is that a problem? This is a really good to talk about. It's in her bedroom, we'll talk and give that right away. But in your success direction, this is what you need to do. Okay. And become successful. Thank yeah? you. Yeah, give her a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Appreciate sure. it. Yeah. So she just mentioned something very powerful. My bedroom is also my office. 
How many of you have that? Ooh, okay. The problem is, when you have that, is that your brain doesn't know what to do, working or sleeping. So when you're working, your subconscious mind is feeling, I want to sleep. And when you are sleeping, your subconscious mind is saying, I want to work. Yeah? There are two different energies. So I always suggest, try to get out of your bedroom, if you can. Because let the bedroom be a place of, you know, pleasure, sleeping, uh, fun, and harmony, perhaps meditation, but nothing to work. Now, let's say you cannot, because you are in a one-bedroom place, and that's kind of where you have only the space to work and to sleep. Make sure you feel there's a difference. So what you can do is get yourself like, a, or a curtain, or a, a paravan, or a screen, that when you work, you do not see your bed. And when you sleep, you do not see your, bed, your office desk. Yeah? Or hang something over your desk, so it's like not visible at night. Yeah? And if you cannot change that, make sure then your bed looks like more like a sofa with pillows and something nice on, so it's like somebody comes and sits on it. Yeah? So create a little change, because that will trigger your mind to see the difference between sleeping and working. Yeah? So that's a very simple trick that you can do. So going back to your success direction, so the first step is you want to see the door. The second step is you want also to activate your success direction. But the first step is to always declutter your success direction. If there's anything there that is not related with your success and money, take it away. Yeah? And then start putting things there. Now you can say, well, Marie, I don't know what to put there. I mean, we all have Google, right? We can put some words in, and then we get images, and we print it out, and we can stick it there. Yeah? So simple. Make a little vision wall in your success direction. Or if you have a vision board, put your vision board in your success direction. Yeah? So as you are creating that energy, and you will start opening up the vibration. Yeah? Now, it's possible you say, but Maria, I have a window there. I have um, like a door there. What do I do? Well, then put a table in front of the window and put some things on there. Could be, I'm sure you all have books on success. Yeah? <coughs> you all have books of successful authors. Perhaps you have the Buddha and the Badass from Vision. Right? You put it there. Perhaps you have the uh, book of Happy Money from Ken Honda. Yeah? So put that there, because it, it gives you messages towards the future of what you desire. You all have things in your home. Don't say you don't have it. Yeah? And if you don't have it, take a little post-it note and write down your goals on money and put it in your success direction. That's how simple you can work. I did that. I just put things on my success direction. I'm going to be in a movie seen by millions of people that will transform the world. It was there for four years till before I got in the secret. Yeah? A simple post-it note. But also connect with that direction. Go to that direction, speak into it. Read and see what you have been placing there. Have a communication with that energy. As you're having communication, you're creating what we call flowing intention. So you have an intention that flows into the direction. Now also, if you can, and that's why a lot of people use the app, yeah? when you are having the app, you can also see if you're facing a good direction. I'm very lucky today because I'm facing my relationship direction. Yeah. So you will see on the app there are four directions that are positive and four that are not. Yeah? So we always try to avoid facing, looking at a direction that is empty. Because if it's empty, it's like the desert. Nothing is happening there. So let's say for um, Evie, yeah? her, she had put all her symbols in the southwest of her office. Like, let's say, the wild fit and the mind valley and a picture of Eric and a picture of, um, you know, vision. She put it all in, her, in the southwest. 
Southwest is for her an empty spot. It means nothing will go out. You have to imagine this is like Times Square, New York. Yeah? And when you put billboards up, yeah? if you would put her billboard of success in the Southwest, it's like the universe is not getting the message. It's a block. If she puts that vision board into the Southeast for her, it opens up and it sp spreads into the world. Yeah? Even if you don't know how it will come back to you. And that is how when you do feng shui, like effortless energy is happening. Yeah? Because all the things I have manifested, I have to be honest, I didn't do any marketing for this. I'm not a marketing guru. But I know my home is my marketplace. Yeah? And a lot of things I want to manifest, I just put in my success direction. Yeah? You know, companies I want to work with, clients I want to have, I put them there. Of course, I have the mindset, and I do the meditation, and I have the right intention, and I take everyday action. But I don't do the big marketing. And still, I attract all this amazing energy because my home is my marketplace. Yeah? So depending on what energy number you have, you need to see what is going on. So I'm going to go over the nine numbers now. So energy number one is the wealth creator. I don't know if some of you already have downloaded the app. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Anyhow, it's a free app. Um, so all the information you need is on the free level. So people have energy number one, like Evie. Um, success is in the Southeast. And that's for the rest of your life. Yeah? It's connected with the chi of your DNA. Okay? So South is your relationship. So if you're single, are you single? Okay, um, look at the relationship direction also, yeah? So people that have energy number two or the number fives that are men, um, they're called the teachers, yeah? And so North East is their success direction. And of course, they are, you will see when you put that in and you're number two, you will get this direction and you will get your compass based on this information. Then the people at number three, they're called the bringers of light. A lot of artists actually are under that number, yeah? And their success direction is south. Then energy number four, the managers, their energy number uh, indicates that north is their success direction. So they will then place all the items about money and success in the north. I want to talk right away wh what you can place there even more. Then the fives, when they're a man, they are the same as number two. When you're five and you are a woman, you're the same as number eight. Because there are only eight compass directions, so there are nine, nine numbers. <laughs> the number six is a creator, so success is west for them. So that's where they will then indicate what to place for their success and money. Seven is the advisor, for example, vision is a seven. Yeah? So northwest is his success direction. Um, one of the reasons I told him that um, it would be good for him to go northwest from a continent. Think about Estonia, it's northwest. So he came from Kuala Lumpur, who is southeast, what actually is not such a good direction for him. And he went northwest. Yeah? So just a little indication. So even if you go somewhere in your a country or on the continent, go to the directions that are good for you, yeah? So for example, I'm moving back to Los Angeles, that is the Southwest, and Southwest is my success direction. And each time I went to live on the West Coast of L, um, like LA, I always was more successful than if I would be on the East Coast for me. Some of you would be great at the East Coast, but I am not, yeah? Um, number eight, I'm a number five, so I'm a female five, the advisor, um, sorry, it's the connector, there's a mistake there. So it's the Southwest is success, and the nines, the healers, East is their success direction. Yeah? So what do we do with this? Well, the first step is if you want to attract money, you have to put money symbols in your success direction, both in your workspace, in your living room, or in your bedroom. 
Now, what are money symbols? Now, that's quite personal to everybody, but I would say um, I would not just put banknotes there, right? Like, but for example, there are these fake banknotes that say, uh, you know, a million dollars, a billion dollars. Um, you can put that there, but not like regular banknotes, yeah? But if you place such a banknote, like checks to the universe, as they call them, put them in a gold-looking frame, because the color for money in feng shui is gold. Yeah? You understand now my golden jacket? <laughs> OK. So a money symbol can also be like a ball in gold. It doesn't have to be a real gold, gold-looking. Fake it till you make it. Yeah? So a golden ball and put coins in it. But make sure the ball is filled to the top. Yeah? And if you earn money from different countries, put in money from different countries, especially if you go online. You know, perhaps you have students and clients from all over the world, then put as much as you can some coins. Perhaps even here, as you meet people from other countries, perhaps you can do some exchange of cash. Yeah? Like, oh, I have a US quarter. Oh, I have 50 cent euro dollars. Uh, euro. So let's change that. Yeah. So the more money you have from other countries, currencies, but it needs to be made of metal. Yeah. That's why we don't use banknotes. When we do put banknotes up like this, it's kind of it's um, the wind will take it and you will lose it. So take metal, because metal is also the um, format or the um, element of money. Metal. Yeah. Ka-ching, 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 right? You hear the sound, okay? So other money symbols could be literally books on money, yeah? That's easy to order. If you don't have real money, you can put that there. Or perhaps in your culture, there are some other money symbols. Like the Chinese would like to put a money frog there, for example. Or a wealth ship. A wealth ship is something they get like a... Um, you know, a built a wealth ship, like a, a model ship, and they put money on it. Yeah, and they put that in their success direction. But there are so many money symbols for you. It could be even an image of somebody who's very wealthy. Yeah, and you have a picture with that person. You can put that picture there, like, I want to be as wealthy as that person. Or in your field, your professional field, perhaps there's a top in your professional field. Who is that? Put a picture, um, even if you're not in that picture, you can fake the picture if you wish and make it a, a collage and put it on there. Yes, please do, right? Um, I always have um, a magazine of Forbes magazine, yeah? With like the 100 billionaires. I always have that in my success section. And I've been so fortunate not yet to become a billionaire on Forbes magazine, but I attracted a few of them as clients, yeah? So that's always nice, yeah? So it doesn't always mean that you become that, but that you attract and the people on that level, yeah? And um, for a while, I, I was um, between homes, and I had not put a Forbes magazine there, and I always update it. Every year there's a new, or every six months they come out with a new list. Buy that magazine, and I put it there, yeah? And so... I was between homes, and then the moment I had a new home, and I had changed uh, countries, I put it there again, and, you know, before I knew it, I had two of the local billionaires reaching out to work with them, yeah? So it doesn't mean you become the billionaire, but you attract them, the people that are on that level. Would that be nice, too? Yes, right? Okay, so these are money symbols. In your living room, a money symbol can be also, for example, when you traveled somewhere, you had a very nice vacation or holiday somewhere, you have some family pictures in that beautiful resort, put that picture up there. Yeah? In your bedroom, you're like, oh, I don't want to think too much about money, but it could just be the um, color, gold, that you put there. Like, uh, for example, a golden candle. Yeah, it doesn't have to be real money, but, or a symbol of money, but just can be the color of money, okay? Then people with money. You always want to connect in with people with money, yeah? Um, this is 
through the brand of um, association. So you're associating with people with money. And then you need to focus on your relationship direction. So let me go back a little bit. Um, here you'll see on the compass, relationship direction is indicated in rows. Yeah? So when you go to the compass, you will see on your, your chart, you'll see rows. So for example, I am facing my relationship direction right now. So if this would be my space, my office, what is there? I need to focus on people with money. Yeah? So I have a lot of my very wealthy clients. Um, I have pictures of them up there. Yeah, and of course, vision is there too, right? Um, so again, in your workspace, that's the first thing. Wherever you're working, you want to focus on people with money. Now, I had this lady and she was um, both working and sleeping in the same space, one bedroom. And I said to her, you need to become a queen. Yeah? Because if you're in a queen position, you're seeing the door, when you are working, when you are waking up, even in your bed, you're waking up, you want to see the door, become a queen. And so she put in her relationship direction, she said like, well, uh, in my country, and she's in, um, from Africa, she said like, you know, there's the wealthiest, the wealthiest king of, um, of the tribes in my country. And I said, she said, I'll put him up there in my relationship direction because I want to make sure that my charities I work with, um, that perhaps he would fund them, right? Now, as it was in her bedroom, she ended up marrying him. <laughs> and she's now really called a queen. So, when you put it in your bedroom, it can have multiple layers, right? So, also in your living room, because when you put it in your living room, you're actually are more providing money also for your family, yeah? And again, people with money can be pictures, it can be books, yeah? So it doesn't have to be so obvious. Feng Shui doesn't have to be in your face, yeah? So when people come into your um, living room, they're like, oh, why do you have a picture up with Steve Jobs, right? Of course, he passed on, so let's put Bill Gates now, right? Why do you have a picture of that? But perhaps you have a book of Bill Gates or a book of Richard Branson that is in that area, yeah? Or again, you can work with golden and metal objects. Also, everything round, oval, yeah, will actually indicate money. So for example, you have a globe there. You can put a globe in your success direction in your living room. People are not aware of that, but you're connecting with all the people in the world that have money. Yeah? It's just how you put your intention. You can say, well, in the world, there's a lot of people that don't have money. But when you put the globe there, you put the intention, I'm connecting with all the people in the world that have money for my business, for my uh, services. Yeah? It's when you place something, don't just place it there. Place it with an intention. I'm placing it there to attract money. I'm placing it there to connect in with wealth. You know, you can kind of bring the work with Marisa Pierce's giving you positive affirmation. Use these positive affirmations as you are bringing it together with what you place in that area. Yeah? So hold the thought, speak it out. Don't just think it, but just speak it out. I'm placing this and do that with a smile. I'm not just like, oh, I'm placing it there for attracting money. <sighs> I'm placing it there because I am open to attract wealth in my life. Put the book there. Yeah? Put the symbol there. So bring the energy towards it. Okay? And then money wisdom. Yeah? Money wisdom is something you need to also connect with. Money wisdom is people that have knowledge about money. Yeah? about investment, about stocks, about, I don't know, cryptocurrency, whatever you want to receive money information about. Yeah? 
can be biographies of people that have very successful uh, created money in their life. So you will see on the app that there is a yellow part and it's called wisdom. Wisdom is everything you do about education, everything you want to do to learn. Perhaps you have certificates, yeah, about your coaching that you have done. Perhaps you have certificates about any educational level that you have done. Your certifications are money wisdom. Yeah? It's the wisdom you have to create money. So take out your certificates, put them again in a gold looking frame and put them in your wisdom direction. Yeah, Because then you say to the universe, the wisdom I have, I'm ready to make money with it. Because money is energy. Money is cheap. You want to keep it flowing. But, you know, right now your home is not indicating money. Yeah? So, again, in your workspace, first of all, second, in your living room, if you can, put it also in your bedroom. Yeah? Then stress-free money. How many of you feel that you're stressed around money? Raise your hand. Okay? Then the interesting thing is you need to focus on your health direction. Yeah? So if you go to the app, you will see the health directions indicated in green. For me, it's northwest. So when I start getting stressed around money, like, oh, you know, it, all the investments are still going well, all the things that I'm doing, is still, I always focus on the northwest for me. For you, it can be southeast, south, east, west, I don't know, depending on your energy number. And when I put too much stuff in the northwest, it actually will affect me and affect my stress around money. Yeah? Now, interesting enough is that in feng shui, when they started with feng shui thousands of years ago, the first thing they focused on was on health and longevity. They didn't focus on money first. Because at that time, people wanted to survive and wanted to have you know, children and grandchildren that one day would take care of them. Yeah? So health is not just about how you feel emotionally, mentally, physically, but it's also about fertility. And because of that, it's also the second direction for your money. If you don't feel healthy, you cannot attract money in your life. Yeah? Okay? So I know some of you are doing amazing things with your for body, mind, and spirit. But if you do anything around body, work, then you can also put it in your health direction as a symbol, because that will actually create stress-free money, and you won't get upset about money, yeah? So another part is money on your vision board. So how many of you have vision boards right now? Okay, cool. Now, some of you work with a life book, yeah? Okay, so if you work with a life book or the vision board, important for you is to place it from now on in your success direction, yeah? So that can be in your bedroom, can be in your living room, can be in your workspace. You hang there your vision board. You place there your life book, yeah? As you're placing it there, it's working nonstop for you before you even think about it, yeah? It's the energy flow is connected with that. So if you have a vision board, I always say generally, if you don't want to put it in your success direction, you want to place it where you can see it. For example, when you wake up, before you go to sleep, you want to see it. I love a vision board in my bedroom or my workspace. Yeah? Um, at least place it in an area where you spend more than three hours, office, bedroom, or living room. Don't put it in your kitchen. Don't hang it on your fridge. You're freezing it. Yeah? So don't hang it. I've seen it once. I come to this amazing actor, and he said, Marie, I made a vision board. I'm like, great, where is it? Well, uh, if you go to the bathroom, you know, I, I, I'm sitting on the toilet, and I hanged it on the door of the bathroom. And I said, he said well, at least a few, day, a, few, uh, a few minutes a day, I look at it. I'm like, yes, but the smell with it is not so great. So let's take that out. He said, yeah, you're right. It has been really hard to manifest new jobs for me. So I put it in his success direction, yeah? And literally he told me within a day, the phone started ringing. His agent, he hadn't heard for two years, suddenly called him 
we have this amazing job for you. Somebody pulled out, you have the job. And he got more paid than he normally earned in two years. Place your vision board well, yeah? Also, the more you see it, the more you confirm it in your subconscious mind. I know some of you have a vision board, perhaps you have a life book. How many of you have done all this beautiful work on it and then it hangs there, it lays there, and you don't even pay attention to it anymore, yeah? How many of you are doing that? I look every day at my vision board. I look every day at my, goal, my goals, yeah? I read them, I rewrite them, I'm working with it, yeah? So if you have your life book, open it up and see where your subconscious mind brings you to the life book, yeah? And you have a vision board. I look at my vision board and I talk to my vision board. Oh, yes, hi, how are you? Oh yeah, I'm going to meet you very soon. Yeah, see you then, right? I'm talking to my people on my vision board, right? I remember I had put my, um, on my vision board, uh, this is one of my first vision boards, I put a little picture up from Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, why not, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so every day I would like, Leonardo, hey, <laughs> right? So a few months later, I'm invited to speak and work with um, a very wealthy banker in New York. And so he's like, I mean, this is a, a few years ago. And he said, um, Marie, you know, you're in a very high-end building here, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio has a, a place here. I'm like, oh, I'm already in the same place as Leonardo DiCaprio. Great, right? So the next day, I have to go to another client somewhere, and it's a casting company. And the casting company is very well known, and, but they had some challenges, and they wanted me to come in. And um, it's raining in New York, and when you're ra it's raining in New York, you share cabs because there are not enough cabs. So somebody stands out uh, on the door, and we're getting a, a taxi, and he said, where do you need to go? I said, I need to go to that place. Oh, I need to go to the same street. A man with a cap, right, sits next to me. Now the woman from the banker, the wife, is sitting with me. She's like, I'm going to make sure you, you end at the right place, you know. I said, yeah, great, and she's like, <laughs> I said, what, what, she said. So this man sits here, I'm sitting in the middle. There's this woman. I'm like, what? It's Leonardo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting next to Leonardo in the cab. <laughs> now guess what, it gets better, yeah? He said like, where do you exactly need to go? I said, that's the address. Oh, I need to go to the same address. What do you need to, who do you need to see there? Oh, the casting company. Oh, me too. So we went together to the same place. What are the odds? <laughs> the rest I can't say anymore. <laughs> but, <laughs> so you don't know when you place something on your vision board, yeah? I have done amazing work, but it's not just because it's on your vision board, but if your vision board is in the right place of your three-dimensional vision board, then is when your vision board really starts manifesting easy and effortless. Who is up for that? Yeah. Who is up for that? Yeah. Okay. So, just a reminder, your vision board plays per energy number, yeah? So energy number one in the southeast, Energy number two, northeast, for the five that are men also. Energy number three, south. Energy number four, north. Energy number six, the west. Energy number seven, northwest. Eight, southwest. And nine, east. Yeah. And that's where you keep it there. Yeah. But like I said, interconnect with it. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about the feng shui of this year. So feng shui is also connected with Chinese astrology. So we are this year in 2023 in the water rabbit year. Yeah. Now rabbit years are always seen as, you know, very prosperous for money. And so a lot of people have new ideas, new businesses that they start, new creative energy that is happening. It's an expansive energy, right? So the rabbit loves to go all over the world and brings happiness. Guess what I am? 
I'm a water rabbit, yeah? So, but how can you, right now, in 2023, activate the money? Because every year there's different places that activate money, and that's not based on your energy number, it's based on the energy of the year, yeah? So for 2023, the first thing we're going to focus on is cash flow. Now, cash flow in feng shui is always related with water. Remember when I said feng shui means wind and water? So we already talked about the wind, yeah? The wind directions, that you need to face the wind direction. You need to activate your wind directions of success and money. But you also need to activate the water, yeah? Now, water is flow of energy, but the best place in 2023 to activate cash flow is in the Southwest, and that's for everyone, yeah? So I suggest you get a bubbling fountain in the Southwest of your workspace or your living room, not your bedroom. We don't want water at night, because at night I don't want you to work, yeah? So at night it's, um, it's too yin, the energy, too calm. So during the day, even if you have an office and your bedroom um, in the same place, only allow the bubbling fountain during the day. Yeah, that means from 8 till 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. After 8 p.m., take it out when your bubbling fountain is in your bedroom because you work there, yeah? If you cannot put a bubbling fountain there, put a symbol or a color, um, colored item like a candle, for example, in the southwest in aqua blue. Not dark blue, aqua blue. Yeah, aqua blue is like, you can see through it, yeah? So that's a color you can place there. The bubbling fountain, of course, is better. Now, if you can't do a bubbling fountain, but you have an image of a fountain, yeah, that will work too, but it's not 100% the same, but still your brain will see it as a message that water is coming. So that means that it's not just putting a bubbling fountain there. If you have chaos in the Southwest, it will affect you. Yeah? So declutter first the southwest before you put a bubbling fountain. Don't put a bubbling fountain with all stuff around it. Give it space to breathe. Yeah? And a bubbling fountain, really a fountain is like $20, $30. It doesn't have to be more than that. But it, and make sure it's always running when it's in your living room or in your workspace, especially when you have online business, because online business doesn't stop at 8 p.m. Yeah? So... That is something a lot of people ask me every year, where do I need to put my fountain, yeah? So you only need to have really one fountain, yeah? So I would not place a fountain at the entrance, yeah? Because when it's at the entrance, you actually are telling the water is going out, the money is going out, yeah? So be careful about that, yeah? So best is in your workspace or your living room. When you want to attract unexpected money, unexpected money is like somebody writes you a check for a bonus. Somebody, um, you know, in your business wants to give you a promotion. You get promotional money. You get an inheritance, yeah? Um, or there's a presenter was telling me about, was telling about this woman that got unexpected money, yeah? Well, she put in the, uh, the west area, she put a white quartz crystal, yeah? And she actually, a week later, got a check for $4,000. Now, somebody who's very stuck, yeah, that is just living by end meets, $4,000 was a lot of money for her, yeah? Um, so a white quartz crystal or something that's gold-looking, like a, I work with candles sometimes, just a gold-looking candle. You don't, don't have to lit a candle. It just has to be present there. Find something that is easy and that nobody knows why you put it there. Again, your feng shui doesn't have to be visible. People don't have to see you do feng shui. Yeah? I come in companies that are totally feng shui and nobody knows it's feng shui. I use what they have. Yeah? And I go to real estate companies or I go to uh, petrochemical uh, companies. They all have feng shui in place without people knowing it's feng shui. Yeah? So place something in your workspace, living room, and here also if you can in the bedroom. Yeah? 
because there you can do definitely a white quartz crystal. How big does a white quartz, white quartz crystal has to be? Kind of a handful, not a small one, like something you can hold in your hands. And then, of course, activate that crystal. Don't just buy a crystal and put it there. Put an intention in it. A crystal is an energy holder. Yeah? Wash the crystal with lavender water or sea salt. And wash it, put it in the sun during the day. Don't put it on full moon. Feng Shui doesn't work with full moon activation, but with sun activation. Between 12 and 3 p.m. And so it's a lot of sunlight. And then take the crystal. It is cleared with the water. It's activated by the sun and then activate it with your intention. Say to the universe, I am open to unexpected money. I'm open to promotions. I'm open to receive the abundance of the world. Just put some positive affirmations in it and then place it there with a smile, yeah? So, and even with candles, you can activate a candle. It's very easy to do. Take a candle in your hand, yeah? Not lit, of course, yeah? Put a candle in your hand and the other candle on top of it. Then do a little meditation, bring the energy in it, yeah, all your intention, and then lit a candle for nine minutes. Then during this nine minutes, the energy will go in, meditate and stay with the candle, and then after that, you can lit a candle again as much as you want, but then that candle is activated, yeah? So these are just some simple techniques. If you want to have better good luck with money in investment, stocks, and real estate. Yeah? Then you focus this year on 2023 on the south. The south of your workspace, living room, and you can even do the bedroom. And that is with placing an amethyst. An amethyst is like a purple stone. Now, if you don't have that, go for a, like a purple candle, or even you can work with an orange candle there too. Yeah, purple or orange. So I do amethyst, but if you want to do citrine gems, gemstone, it's like a, an orange stone, you can do that too. Purple and orange are the two colors for that. When you do that, you can activate that. But of course, clean out the south. If you have an um, investment portfolio, if you have some stocks, or you want to build up that uh, for yourself, then make sure you can put these images there, This. Uh, even the image of an amethyst is fine, but the amethyst itself is always stronger. But also, anything you have about books or magazines about that field, you can place that there, yeah? So, this is like a few tips I wanted to give around, um, you know, how to attract money. But I want to go and finalize before um, we end for today with a inner feng shui meditation to clear out your money blocks. Are you open for that? Yeah. yeah. So let's do that. So may I invite you to close your eyes, sit your, put your feet next to each other, so ground yourself very well. Take a deep breath in and out. And as you take a deep breath in and out, visualize that you are in your home right now, or in your apartment, wherever you're living. You're not here right now. You are back at your space. And try to find the center of that space, the center of your home. And as you're standing there, we're connecting and aligning with the universe. And we're calling in the frequency of gold. Gold is a frequency of abundance, of receiving all that you need and more for manifesting your goals, for leading your soul purpose, 
And just imagine that from the center of the universe, this golden ray of energy is coming down through the center of your ceiling and you are receiving it. Open your hands and just receive this abundance frequency. And feel it coming into your heart space. And you can even put your hands on your heart chakra now and just say, I accept abundance of the universe. I accept the abundance of the universe. And then open your hands again and just imagine that you're walking through your home. Go first to your entrance. And as you're in your entrance, like open the door. And as you're opening the door, even the gold ray of energy comes into your door and you receive it again. Say yes, thank you, I'm grateful for the abundance of the universe coming into my space. And fill your whole entrance with gold. From the ceiling to the floor to every corner, everything that is there, bless it with abundance, with golden rays of energy. And then bring that light to your living space we have your sofa, we have your dining area. And just fill that whole space with golden frequency from the ceiling to the floor, to every corner. Bless everything that is there, every image, every statue, every sofa, every table, every chair. Place a beautiful abundance blessing on it. Everything is sparkling with gold. And then go to your bedroom and bring that golden flow of energy of chi into your bedroom and fill your whole bedroom from the ceiling to the floor to every corner, open every closet, every cabinet, fill it with all these golden frequencies. And let it all sparkle and say, even at night, I am open to abundance. I allow abundance to come into my life, in my dreams, in my subconscious mind. And then go to all the other places of your home that we haven't talked about yet. Just spray the golden frequency into your kitchen, into your bathroom, your garage, everywhere. And then come back to the center and stand again in that golden ray of light. And the ground that now to the earth through your feet, anchor that abundance in your home. And visualize that around your apartment, around your home, is this golden aura field. You're telling the universe, I am so ready to attract abundance. I am letting go of all my blockages. I send them out into the universe. They are not longer with me or in my home any longer. I'm only focused on the frequency of abundance. Now when you feel ready, bring your hands together, move your hands, Bring your warm hands in front of your eyes. Open your eyes. 
and let go of your hands. Now you should see your aura so sparkling. You're all very sparkling right now. Yeah. It's possible you've done this uh, meditation and visualization. You're like, oh, this was hard to create gold in that area. Yeah. Perhaps that's where you need to do some decluttering. Yeah. When you felt like, yeah, the flow was not so great there. The sparkle was just uh, minimum. Perhaps you need to focus on your success direction there. Yeah. So this is like um, finding energetically what is wrong with your home. Yeah. So before we um, finalize today, I would like to keep some space open for questions. So um, can I have the flying mic? Yeah. So there's a lady here. We can start with her. Hi, thank you so huh? much for that. Can you explain a little bit more about the candles? I feel like that represents fire, and you've talked a lot about wind and water. Yes. So um, a candle is, represents energy. Yeah. So, of course, we can use it as a fire element, but if you just put a candle there with a color, it just represents energy. Yeah. So even if you lit a candle, it's energy. Now, if you would put a fireplace there, that would be an element of fire. Yeah? If you put like 10 candles there, you will have a fire energy. But just one candle, a candle can be placed in every corner or every direction because it, it represents energy. Okay? Yeah? Another question? Um, a gentleman over there? Yeah? And we come down to the front. Yeah. Uh, thank you. This is so great. My question's about so I, I live with this beautiful young lady here. And we have different energy numbers. Yes. How do you negotiate that? Yes, how to <laughs> negotiate that. <laughs> I love that. So let me go back a little bit. Oh, I, I don't know if we, I cannot do the slides anymore. Okay, so let's say, what's your number? Uh, a, two. a two and? One. And? Five. Five. Okay, great. So northeast is your success direction, and yours is southwest. Yeah. So. Do you work in the same place? You work at home, do you have your own office? We, we have our own offices, yes. Okay, great. So that's the first thing. You have your own office. So in your own office, you will focus on the northeast success direction. And for you on your office, you'll face, you know, connecting with southwest. So that's the first thing. That's easy on office areas, yeah? So you make sure you see the door. Do you see the door? No, but I'm changing that. You're changing that, great, right? Do you see the door? Yes, you see the door, so perfect. So one of the things you can do is you see the door, but you also can change your desk in such a way that you face one of your good directions, yeah? So if I take my app here, right? So if I go, for example, for you, this is my office. This stage is my office, yeah? So for you, northeast is your success direction. The problem is here in that space, facing northeast wouldn't be possible because you don't see the door. So for you, you will see you have several directions. You have always four directions you can work with. Yeah? For in your case, putting your desk facing your wisdom direction, yeah, southwest, would be perfect because you see the door. Yeah? So that would be for you. For you, if that would be the same place, Again, southwest is your success direction. You cannot always face your success direction. I have an office, I cannot face my success direction. Yeah? But try to face one of the directions so that you see the best the door. Okay? So if, for example, there is, um, for you, for example, west is also good. Let's say this is the office, and I would sit here facing west, but the door is on my side, I don't see the door, yeah? So you, the door has to be in that peripheral view, like this. If it's on the side of you, you are not in a power position, okay? That makes clear? And then, of course, you will activate that direction, yeah? So the northeast, you will see what you place there is for you, southwest is for you. And when you place something there, put the intention that it is for you. Hey, universe, I am Marie Diamond. I'm activating my success direction. Say your name. Yeah? So put the intention in there. Okay? So in the bedroom, you can do that too. But if you have your own office, your own workspace, I always say focus first on the workspace. 
yeah? But if you have a bedroom and an office in the same area, then yeah, you need to focus on the bedroom. Yeah? So this way you will be able to work with it. Okay, thank you. Another question. There was a young man here. Yeah? Hey, that was great. The uh, question I've had, I've heard something before about mirrors in the bedroom and yes. not having them in the bedroom. Yeah, Is that mirrors true in the bedroom. or false? Or? Yeah. So mirrors always doubling the energy. That's what mirrors do, right? So we always want mirrors in places that are active. Now, a bedroom, I know certain moments were active, but <laughs> it's not considered an active place. Yeah, it's a place where you sleep. Yeah? So when you have mirrors in the bedroom, you're actually doubling the inactive energy, the sleeping energy. <coughs> so people have a harder time to take action, first of all. Now they have seen through some um, studies that people that have a mirror in the bedroom, they have higher blood pressure, yeah? they have more inflammation, because it's like it's doubling the stress. You come to bed with stress, it doubles your stress. Yeah? Also, it doubles when you are alone in the bed. It means you're saying to the universe, there's already a second person in the bed. Yeah? Or if you're with two people, you're saying to the universe, we'll be more open to more partners. Yeah? So that's why we try to avoid that. But the same having the mirror on the side, mirror above, or mirror in front of you, right? it all doubles. So I always say cover the mirror during the night. Yeah? Could be a curtain, could be that you're putting a screen in front of it, or you hang some posters. Make sure that the mirror doesn't see you either, right? Because sometimes you see, oh, the mirror doesn't see me, but when you look in the mirror, the mirror sees the bed. Yeah? So be careful about that. So the first rule I always say when people are single, they need to cover the mirrors. Yeah? And then they're more open to attract a partner. When you have healthy shoes, always cover the mirror. Okay, so that's something you can work with mirrors in the bedroom, but in a place that is, for example, your dining room, your living room, you can do mirrors. In hallways, you can do mirrors. Be careful at the entrance. You don't want to have a mirror opposite the door, because you're actually saying you're coming in and the mirror says, get out. Yeah, so always think you are light, and when you come in, the light is reflected out. Okay, so a lot of this information, of course, you can find, and so much more in the amazing uh, course that we have in your membership, Feng Shui for Life. If you haven't taken that, please take it. It's amazing course, like the best course I've ever done on Feng Shui in Mind Valley, with a lot of visiting of homes and the befores and the afters. So get your Feng Shui for Life and really start that. It's an amazing course to really change your life and to also help others in your family, yeah? Because this is like, once you know it, once you know your number, once you know how to do things, every home you go to, you can reuse it and repractice it, yeah? So for the rest of your life, your feng shui is up to date and you will attract so much more than that you right now were thinking to receive it, but the, you can't receive it because your space is telling a different story than your mind, yeah? Now I'm telling you, what will win, your mind or your home? It will be your home because it's bigger than you. It's, stab it's stable, your mind is always moving, yeah? Your home is stable. So if your home is telling a different story than you, your home wins. That's why you want your home to be aligned with everything, yeah? So another question, um, yeah, lady in the back there, yeah? I don't hear you. Oh, no. Okay. Thank you so much. This was really inspiring. I was thinking of digital nomads. I am not one yet, but you're saying you're home. What if you're constantly changing homes? Yeah. Then how does that work? Yeah, of course. I'm, in a, I'm a digital nomad for the moment. Yeah. So I'm actually the whole summer from one place to another. So the first thing I do, I come into is it an Airbnb or in a room or in a hotel room. I take my app right? And I see where's my success direction. Yeah? So I'm in a hotel room right now. My success direction has there my books, has there my special compass I have. Um, I have all 
I wrote post-it notes there about Mind Valley, about the goals I have, have my goal book that I write my goals in, because I don't have my vision board physically with me, but I have a picture of my vision board with me in my goal book. I put my goal book there. Yeah? I, on my relationship direction, we were yesterday in the, coming into the hotel room, and yeah, we were not looking at the directions, and my daughter, her luggage was in my relationship direction. So I asked her before the night was over, please take out <laughs> that from my relationship direction, put it in, your, um, in, in the closet so that it's clean. Yeah? So make sure that your best directions at least are clean. And I, I always suggest get a little bit of a, some information with you, the book that inspires you right now, or take your business cards or flyers, or get, create a little bit of a, a, I would say, a feng shui kit with you, a little crystal, something that you can travel with. Yeah. So we're actually right now with summer. We're going. We're in, in Switzerland right now with my family. So we have some pictures with us. We have some things that we place, and right away, we check. Oh, this is the success direction. We use some things that are there. Yeah, and we put it there, but we always have some small things with us. Yeah, so I know I've lived many times, many years as digital nomad, so I can tell you this works. Yeah, uh, lady over here. Yeah, we have still some time. Yeah, great. I have another digital nomad question. I live in 150 square feet in a travel van. And so there's not a lot of places to put things down. Yeah. So you know, is there a way to navigate having a vision, something or other? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Right now I keep things moving, kind of moving in the few places okay. I can put yes. things down. Okay, great. So the first thing is you find out your directions. Yeah, declutter these directions. Yeah. Now let's say you have a lot of stuff and you're like, I don't know, I am so minimalist, a minimal space. So let's say you have something, I've done this in my life, that I had like a box, right, and I had to put that in my success direction. I put a beautiful uh, fabric over it, yeah, and I put things on the box, yeah. So I just reuse the energy, like, but if you have clutter, always cover it, yeah. Put it in a box and cover it with a nice fabric, yeah. So it kind of blends in to your space, and literally, sometimes just working with post-it notes to start. Now, I'm telling you this wonderful little story. Um, a man about four years ago contacted us and said, I'm living in a tent in Los Angeles. He was down in his luck, and he said, I don't know what to do, but I would love if it's possible to get a scholarship from you. And I said, well, you know, you have a phone. He said, yeah, I do have a phone. I said, okay, um, download the app, right? And I gave him some free information to start, right? And, um, and I said, just start with post-it notes. Are you able to get some post-it notes? He said, yes, I can. So he did hang in his success direction a post-it note. I am successful. I attract, um, um, I attract um, a job. So he needed a car, like I attract a car. He, like, he put things up. In his relationship, I attract people that will support and help me. Little post-it notes, four post-it notes he put out. And every day he would look at them and read them. But as you're looking in the right direction, your brain is stronger. Yeah? So if you face your best direction, your brain goes into alpha. Three months later, somebody from the family said, oh, we have a third-hand car before we are letting it go. Do you want a car? We fill it with gas for you. He had a car. Then he could sleep in the car. He came out of the tent and he started parking and every evening he would look at the app and put his post-it notes in the right directions, in the car, in the parking lot, wherever he was sleeping every night. Then he got a job, yeah. Then he got an apartment, then he got a girlfriend. And so last March, he called me and said, Marie, I can, meanwhile we were connecting with each other, he had my phone number, and I was so proud of him. He said, Marie, I have saved the money for an hour session with you. Yeah. He lives now, in three years time, in a three bedroom apartment. He is so happy. You know what he does every Sunday? 
He goes back to the tent camp and teaches people how to use the app. And every tent, he goes in and asks their number and put post-it notes up for them. So don't ever tell me you cannot do this. If a man from a tent, living in a tent, that's down on his luck in LA, is now having a full-time job and a girlfriend. He also had legal issues, all the legal issues cleared up. Yeah? And he's living totally aligned with the universe. So never tell you cannot do feng shui if a man like this can start doing that. That being said, thank you for today.